Tonight on To The Point, blizzard warnings in the Sierra. Heavy rain and snowfall pushing through your Friday into Saturday and the heaviest snow is expected to fall. How much we can see. We have live team coverage. I'm Devin Truby in Truckee where the town is bracing for the worst part of this blizzard and the near whiteout conditions. I'm in El Dorado County tonight where the icy rain has started. Coming up, I'll let you hear from residents and what worries them the most. And later, where voter turnout stands in the primary election and how the storms could impact that. We continue to follow breaking news tonight. Take a look, Interstate 80 is now shut down in both directions in the Sierra. This is a live look right now. You see a lot of flashing red lights, traffic at a standstill. This is at Donner Summit, and people are being told to turn back down the hill, a little lower down in the hill where they are turning around. We will have a live report from I-80 coming up in just two minutes. Thank you for joining us. This is To The Point. I'm Laura Painter. Alex Bell is off. We are tracking a major winter storm with dangerous blizzard conditions. We have some video to show you tonight. Take a look. On the left is the Everline Resort in Olympic Valley near Lake Tahoe. You can see the snow has been moving in since early this morning. All of that snow right there, but still a beautiful sight. And on the right, drivers dealing with hard rain and that powerful wind in downtown Sacramento. We have live team coverage starting with meteorologist Carly Gomez. And Carly, we've been tracking this for a few few hours, mm -hmm. 24 hours now. You've been preparing us for this all week. Yeah. Conditions are changing so fast. Definitely very quickly. Yesterday it was kind of just coming in, right? Mm -hmm. We started seeing that snow and then the rain. Now it's full force. We're looking at those blizzard conditions with the blizzard warning in effect. So it's blizzard out there in the Sierra, as well as looking at thunderstorms that have been pushing through the afternoon hours with early radar detected rotation. That just means, hey, we're getting some spots on our radar showing that the clouds may be starting to move in circles here. Not a tornado unless it touches the ground, but we did actually see two tornadoes being reported and confirmed now in the Madera area. We actually saw a lot of social media videos of that funnel cloud touching the ground. So this is the kind of weather we're dealing with over northern California and a lot going on off the coastline here near Fort Bragg. We even see lightning strikes hitting trees causing a fire. Now what we're seeing is all of this moisture pushing its way up into the Sierra with strong wind gusts. That is going to last through the overnight hours and getting really heavy as well as blistery out there. As we take a look at precipitation totals since midnight, doesn't look like a lot around the Sacramento area, but we've definitely been spotty. A 10 to about a quarter inch of rain. I expect this to really begin adding up as we get to the midnight hour. And then finally, looking at the foothills, a lot more coming our way. Let's talk really quick about the last snowfall totals that we've been seeing early this morning, up to about 19 inches now. We're pushing about 30 inches of snowfall in the last 24 hours. We'll talk more about what to expect for the rest of the weekend coming up. Yeah, lots to track, Carly. Thank you. We have live team coverage tonight across the Sierra from Nevada County to El Dorado County keeping you informed on the current conditions and their impacts. Our Garth Pasanga joins us live tonight near Drum 4 Bay, where I-80 is shut down in both directions. Garth, while people there are being told to turn around. Yeah, Laura, they are, and that is why they're shut down I-80 right behind me here. Right now, not as many cars. There's a long backup over the past few hours. That backup has since left. They have turned around gone into the valley but right now we're getting a consistent rain that's trying to turn into snow but the bigger story that continues to be here is the high winds we're about 4500 feet elevation here at drum four bay i can only imagine what the wind is doing in higher elevation but this is uh, what drivers are going to be seeing as they come up to eastbound i-80 caltrans crews are here turning traffic around telling them to go back down to sacramento and they're doing the same thing on the westbound side at the state line telling cars it, it's just not safe to travel through the Sierra right now as high winds continue to be an uh, issue causing blizzard conditions. There's been a lot of spin outs that officials have had to report to. Uh, CHP told me the reason why they shut down eastbound 80 uh, was closer towards Donner Lake interchange. There was just a lot of spin outs in that area as the night is falling. They just don't want to risk putting their crews out there in a dangerous uh, situation where they have to go rescue someone because of uh, they may not know how to drive in the snow or they're just not driving carefully. So that is the, what's going on here. I-80 remains closed here in both directions. No ETA of when they're expecting to reopen. But again, this storm is forecasted to grow stronger, so it could be a while. Stay with ABC 10 for the latest. Laura. Okay, you're 
You're absolutely right, Garth Paul. It could be a while. And these are conditions you don't want to be stuck in. It's now dark outside. It is soaking rain mm -hmm. out there. Avoid this area until conditions are safe. Garth Paul, you be safe as well. Thank you. So let's take you to Truckee now, where people are bracing for the worst part of the blizzard. There's been near whiteout conditions during parts of the day. And our Devin Truby has spent the past 24 hours up there, and she joins us live right now. Devin, those conditions have been changing fast. You've seen the evolution of this storm with your own eyes. What are you seeing right now? Yeah, that's right, Laura. And to be honest, this might be the lightest the snowfall has been in the last 90 minutes, but we have been seeing this type of steady, consistent snowfall all day. And the town of Truckee asking people to please stay off the roadways as visibility is only going to get worse and they need to do their work. And the time spent coming to rescue people is time spent also that they could be using to clear roads. Now, it's a team of 25 people working 24 7 in 12 hour shifts in order to clear these roadways. We also heard from Truckee Emergency Management Services that these conditions can be potentially deadly at this time of year. Up at Palisades Tahoe, they have 100 inches of new snowfall, so they've been working with avalanche control to get things safe and ready for skiers and snowboarders as well. The resort was closed today, and emergency officials are encouraging people, please do not come up here. I know people want to come up and ski. I understand that. That's what we're here for. But... This is not the time. At some point later tonight, there'll be enough snow and enough wind that even being in your car could be deadly. That was Robert Walmack, the head of Truckee's Emergency Services, and he also says that a reminder, it takes the town of Truckee about 10 days to clean up after a storm, so not everything will be back to normal, even if the pass opens and the storm clears and people come up to ski and snowboard. Now, PG&E already telling ABC 10 earlier in the week to expect power outages. We spoke with Robert, and he says based on all the upgrades the town of Truckee did this year, they only anticipate outages hopefully for six to eight hours at a time. That is hopefully the best news we can hope for. But if trees are involved and they down those power lines, it'll take a lot longer to get power back here in the area, Laura. Yeah, and Devin, like you mentioned, there is a lot of time left in the season, a lot of snow to enjoy when it is safe to get up there. This is certainly not the time to take any chances. Devin Truby, thank you. We want to get to another trouble spot. We've been tracking conditions along Highway 50 all day today. Really slick conditions out there on the roads. As you can see, snow and rain causing some difficult driving conditions. Our Roxana, our, our Roxana Elias joins us live from Pollock Pines right now in El Dorado County, where neighbors there are also on high alert. Roxanne, how have conditions been there throughout the day? Well, Laura, we've seen it all from rain to sleet to even hail. Right now, it seems to be like a little bit of an icy rain and the winds have been picking up all throughout the day. If you can take a look behind me, there's a sign that's been placed here at this intersection and residents tell me that it was placed here after drivers were stranded trying to go up Highway 50 last year. People parked along this road causing issues for snow plows trying to get through. This sign now reads no parking when plowing or you will be towed. Now earlier today, sleet and heavy fog in Pollock Pines were a clear sign a major winter storm is on the way. Nearby residents like Ian Taylor is stocking up and buying groceries. His concern when a storm of this magnitude hits, people are driving too fast. Taylor also remembers last year when a large crowd of visitors heading up Highway 50 ended up stranded here in Pollock Pines after roads were shut down. Well, it got real crowded and it was like you shouldn't be here 50 closed, I believe because it was avalanche and they were just all packed in this Pollock Pines area. Uh, Pony Express right here was just bumper to bumper. Now, he says that if you have not made it up to Tahoe yet, he says this is just not worth doing anymore. He's asking people that do have to hit the road to take it nice and slow. And if you have to go somewhere to leave with plenty of time so that you don't catch yourself speeding. Laura. Yeah, Roxanne, I can see it's gotten really dark out where you are, too, in Pollock Pines. And those slick conditions and those icy conditions you mentioned certainly aren't going to help. So everyone, please be safe. Roxanne Elias. Thank you. We'll still ahead on to the point. California's primary election just days away. What the weather and already low voter turnout could mean for your vote. Plus, we hit the back roads visiting a glass outhouse in the desert. Is this like a metaphor for something or is it you just like... 
We've got to go. You got to go. Okay, so this blizzard and this storm is really escalating. Conditions are changing fast. Mm -hmm. Carly, what are you seeing right now? Well, we've been looking at everything, running the gamut from thunderstorms, showers, early radar detection, rotation, funnel clouds, tornadoes, and a blizzard in the Sierra. All of it happening all today across Northern California, and we're continuing to see it this evening through tonight. You see them popping up everywhere. We don't typically see them widespread like this. This radar indicated rotation is usually maybe popping up one, two areas, and then it's gone when we get those thunderstorm chances. But wow, look how many we have. I mean, they have been just running around all this afternoon, evening hours across our maps, and it really just shows you how intense this storm really is. As it moves up toward the Sierra, we are looking at that snowfall starting to hit pretty hard and could even see some thunder snow, thunderstorms in snowy conditions. And we've been seeing a lot of activity as well on the coastline, even a, two tornadoes being reported there near the Madeira area. Now, low pressure systems pushing down south, and this one's helping to deepen it. The circulation here and that rotation, the movement is really what's happening is it's pulling in that cold Arctic air from the Gulf of Alaska into the first low. As it rotates around, you're seeing how the clouds kind of break up there. Those clouds are creating that unstable weather condition. It's been moving over northern California throughout the day, and now we're going to look at it moving through late tonight as well and creating blizzard conditions with strong wind gusts. Now, this will be in effect until 4 a.m. on Sunday with that blizzard warning as well as a wind advisory for the valley. Wind gusts up to about 35 to 45 miles per hour and over through the Sierra Crest here. Anywhere from 45 to even 60 mile per hour gusts. We've seen some peak wind gusts at Palisades Tahoe pushing 167. I mean, those strong wind gusts there. Moving into your Saturday, we'll still see some strong wind gusts in the valley as well. And then finally into your Sunday night, things slow down for the valley. Stay pretty strong for the Sierra. We do have an avalanche warning in effect from Truckee South into the central Sierra as we are looking at the back country there dealing with overloading snow. So dangerous conditions you are not advised to go in the back country spots. Please be safe out there as those ski resorts try to mitigate some of that avalanche potential. A lot of the showers pushing through tonight with more of that snow at low elevations into Saturday morning and into Sunday morning as well could be pushing as low even as about 2,000 feet. We do expect to see temperatures right around those low 50s and then pushing those low 60s into next week. More shower chances on Tuesday. All right, Carly, thank you. And remember, you can stay informed on road closures, outages, and important weather alerts with our ABC 10 app anytime, anywhere. It is free. Just download it wherever you get your apps and don't forget to turn on those notifications. Next on To The Point, where voter turnout stands in the primary election and how the storm could impact that. California's primary election is Tuesday, and already experts are predicting potentially record-breaking low voter turnout. And that means your vote is statistically even more important and impactful. Our Becca Habiger talked with an election data expert who says because of low turnout, races could be decided by razor-thin margins. California has some 22 million registered voters. Our turnout is probably likely to be around a third of voters actually returning these ballots or showing up at the polls by election day. Paul Mitchell is vice president of Political Data Inc., a bipartisan voter data firm. He says the current record for low voter turnout in the California presidential primary election is in 2012, when just 31 percent of Californians voted. And we could be on track to break that. In a low turnout election, your vote matters even more because if a quarter of the electorate is voting, then your vote essentially counts almost like four votes because you know, the impact of it in an election, especially a close election, is magnified. He says the lack of voter enthusiasm in this presidential primary is likely due to the fact that a Biden-Trump rematch is all but official. He encourages voters to consider their local races and the impact you, yes, you, can have on the outcomes. You might see races that are decided by razor-thin margins. You might see an outcome that you don't expect because some local community group turned out 400 people for a city council race and then the incumbent doesn't win. Volatility happens when you have low turnout elections. As for the U.S. Senate race, Mitchell says the primary plays an outsized role. The four frontrunners are Democratic U.S. Representatives Barbara Lee, Katie Porter and Adam Schiff and Republican Steve Garvey. That leaves the three Democrats fighting for a split Democratic vote, whereas Republicans will be more unified in voting for Garvey. And at this point, Mitchell says Republicans account for a disproportionately high amount of the voter turnout so far. Because of 
of the elevated Republican turnout, it's very likely or almost maybe guaranteed at this point that Steve Garvey is going to make the runoff. So it has a material effect, this primary and low turnout on who makes it to the general. So bottom line, don't forget about that ballot sitting on your kitchen table because your vote matters in every election, but statistically, especially in this one. That was our Becca Habiger reporting. And keep in mind, this storm isn't making things easy. With the storm in the Sierra, we are continuing to monitor the impacts this could have on vote centers. Just head to our website, abc10.com, to see a running list of places that are closed. You know what that music means. Buckle up, it's time for another adventure on the back roads. And tonight, John Bartell takes us to a popular rest stop in the San Bernardino Desert. Before driving into the vast deserts of Wonder Valley, California, I suggest using a bathroom in either Joshua Tree or 29 Palms. Because if you don't, there's really only one place to go. Uh, but you're telling me these are, these actually work? Yes, they have flushing toilets in them. Come here, I'll oh, show okay. you. Okay, all right. Welcome to the Glass Outhouse art installation. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> An eye-opening lavatory experience for when you really have to go. People just kind of go in here and they... Yeah, well, you can see out, but we can't see in. It's true. The one-way glass does provide you with a certain amount of privacy. But when Laurel Seidel opened up her desert art gallery, the glass outhouse wasn't supposed to be the main attraction or the name of the place. It was simply built out of necessity. I said, well, there's no tall bushes you can go behind out here that you can't see through. Okay, we need a restroom. I don't want people trekking through my house. As you will come to find, Laurel likes to recycle. So instead of getting rid of some old one-way glass, she put it to use, just like everything else on the property. What, what are these things over here? Are they, uh, did they come from someplace or? <laughs> well, everything came from someplace. Admission into the glass outhouse is free, and so is Laurel's wit and sass. As for the origin of her things, she says they come from here and there. Set it up so it's humorous or artistic or, you know, whatever. And Laurel's a bit of a free spirit. She worked at a number of jobs and traveled all over the nation collecting knickknacks. Eventually, she and her husband bought this place in the desert to store all their things and start a farm. A rabbit barn. We raised rabbits commercially here. When Laurel got tired of raising the rabbits, she converted the barn into an art gallery. It turned out to be one of those, if you build it, they will come type things because it's a not-for-profit and there's no fees. Because Laurel doesn't charge any commission fees, she gets art from all over the world, which makes a very diverse art gallery. You'll even find some of Laurel's paintings. What, would, what kind of art would you call this? This is a fe feather art? Or? I guess. I don't know. Okay. It's just art. It's a, it's a bird on a bird feather. Yeah. After looking at some art, you may want to consider getting married. The Glass Outhouse Art Gallery has its own chapel. And you said, how, how many people have been married here so far? 10. Today was the 10th. The chapel's not big, but it is free and beautifully designed by her husband. But just to be clear, she says it wasn't the husband she originally moved here with. Number the one two. I, yeah, no, no, actually four. Oh. <laughs> All right, okay. I had to kiss a lot of frogs before I found the right guy. You know, sometimes that happens. It took me 70 years. You could use a restroom back in Joshua Tree or 29 Palms before venturing into the Wonder Valley, but why? Like, uh, I mean, is this like a metaphor for something or is it you just like... <laughs> We've got to go, you got to go. <laughs> Here at the Glass Outhouse, the toilet is clean, the art is interesting, and the company is more than memorable. I don't know if anyone's ever told you this before, but I, I feel like you've lived a very colorful life here. Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> From the Glass Outhouse in Wonder Valley, I'm John Bartell. Hope to see you on the back roads. Ah, living a colorful life. That is the goal, John. Thank you. <laughs> now it's your turn. You got something in your town that would be a great road trip destination? Let John know all about it by texting your idea to 916-321-3310. We're back after this. Okay, just into our newsroom. Check out this stunning video the National Weather Service had just posted on Twitter 
This is a tornado in Madera County. You can see that funnel cloud spinning. It's pretty big. It's right there in the sky. You see it. And Carly, this storm really stands out for you. I know yeah. you and the weather team have been so busy. You've been tracking weather in our area for a long time, and it stands out. There's, there's it lot does. Going on. There is. It's a lot going on all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And as you saw that video, look further south. You can see those two tornadoes. Those have been produced because we're seeing all the other things up north of it. Those rotations, those radar indicated rotations and those funnel clouds leading to tornado warning and then eventually there, a tornado. Okay, and we'll have more on uh, LNT tonight at 11 and online as well. Thank you for joining us. Have a safe weekend. Hey, it's Alex. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching the To The Point team and I love hearing from you and I hope that you'll stay in touch. And don't forget, you can always email me and the team at to the point at abc10.com or you can even send us a text message at 916-321-3310.